international conference. Uh, the task I want to share you share with you today is using SDR platform to extract the F fingerprint of the wireless device for device identification. The RI has the following background series about our fingerprint, I fingerprint correction, experiments and corrections. The background explains why defined, uh, device identification is needed because of the advent of the IoT. The number of wireless devices are increasing. The mind restoring let the information systems to be intrude, used, damaged, and modified if there is no a primary mechanism technology about wireless devices. In other words, the importance of information protection and security can be ignored anymore. Therefore, it's necessary to identify the wireless device to determine whether they are legal or authorized. The figure is a description of wireless device or sensors that may be included in the IoT network. Of course, the number of devices will actually be more and more abundant. Next. I briefly introduced I fingerprint. It's impossible that different devices are extremely the same because there are some uncontrollable random physical changes in the process of products. Resulting in some size difference between trans transmitters. These differences are uncontrollable and unique. So we can use these features as the fingerprint of the transmitters, called RF fingerprint. RF, RF fingerprint is like that in a conversation between people. The listener can identify a speaker by inherent variations of the voice. RF fingerprint can identify different wireless devices by extract the time domain and fixed domain properties of the signal during the operation of this device. Ten eight hundred and two point one one A or G as an example. The preamble allows the receiver to obtain time and frequency synchronization and estimated channel for equalization. When using this protocol for transmission. No matter what the transmit data is, the preamble is always the same. In this protocol, the preamble can be defined into short training field and long training field. So we extract signal features from these two parts. Then, the digital signal process at the receiving end is shown in the figure. Time, time is related to the sequence of DSP. So you can easily understand. So you can easily understand the operation of STF and LTF respectively from the green box. When we, when, when we use the SDR frame phone to receive the signal, we will extract and correct the signal features from them. In this slide, I will introduce some of the hardware, software, and relative parameters we use. We use. The model of the receiver is ETHOS USRPB210, and we design the receiving pro program by GNU Radio. There are many two setting parameters when receiving signals. Serving rate is 20 megahertz and frequency is 2.437 gigahertz. Finally, in order to avoid a surrounding interference, we implement signal transmission in the, in the shading box.
We need some devices such as WNICS to collect the data. In order to better know wireless devices can be effectively identified by F fingerprints. We also change a classifier for experiments. The experiment process is shown in the figure. We use a supervised learning algorithm to design classifier. Through the experimental results, it's find that XGBoost is the most prominent. Therefore, we, we choose XGBoost for verification. The theory of XGBoost can be freely described by the figure. In short, uh, XGBoost is a gradient booster tree. It's a combination of many weak learners to become a strong learner. There are many two setting parameters about the classifier. Depth of the decision tree is three. A number of the decision tree is 300. We use the Stability data module to divide a data set into two distinct sets. One of the sets contains nine out of ten data, which which is used to train the model. The other set uses the main, remaining data to validate the model. In order to verify the feasibility of device identification by F fingerprint. We conduct experiments on nine Wi-Fi devices, including three brands, and each brand contains three devices of the same model. We collect a similar uh, number of samples of design three types of experiments to identify devices through XGBoost. The experiment A is to verify the different brands of Wi-Fi device will produce different R fingerprints. We obtain data by transmitting and receiving pairings between nine Wi-Fi device and a uh, fixed receiver. The accuracy rate of identification is about 99% by classifier. This, uh, this shows that we can effectively classifies I fingerprint caused by different transmitters. The experiment P is to properly if power spectrum density can be considered as an I fingerprint or not. It serves one of the wireless device or of three different brands and a fixed receiver to obtain data. The accuracy rate of the identification is about 99% by classifier. The figure can be easy to find that the three PSDs are significantly different. So we can say that PSD can indeed be regarded as a fingerprint. In the last experiment, we increase RX as, as a variation factor and test whether different RX will affect RF fingerprint. We obtain data from nine Wi-Fi devices corresponding to three different RXs. First, we evaluate the accuracy rate of the model that trained by the data set received by each X. The, the table shows the results on this step. Second, we use data sets correct from different axes to validate the model's performance. For example, 
we use the data set received by Rx1 and let it to train the multi-class classification model. In step one, we could get the accuracy of identification from data set one to model one is about 99%. But when you when when we felt that the class file with the data set from X2 and X3, the accuracy rate of the identification significant drop off to uh, 69% and 36% respectively. Therefore, the fingerprint model training with data set from X1 could then uh, if, uh, effectively identify the samples from X2 or X3. It could be seen that samples from different eyes did affect eye fingerprint model. The same conclusion was obtained when the same experiment was repeated for X2 and X3. The, fig the figure can clearly describe the relationship between eyes data sets and model in this experiment. Through this experiment, we find that for the same TX, X fingerprint with different X generating pairs are significantly different. The existence of X fingerprint is relative to TX and RX. I fingerprints can effectively identify no wireless devices. The accuracy rate of identification is about 99%. Although PSD can be regarded as a as a eye fingerprint, it may be easily interfere and affect in the real environment. I fingerprint is related to TX and RX. It's indicated that we can use the same classifier and use different axes to direct share the X fingerprint. In the future, we will continue to study the transferability of the X and try to resolve the relativity of X fingerprint, X fingerprints exist in the TX and RX. Thank you for your listening.